welcome to my guide on how to properly play support for Hell on Earth. So support is a supporter role, hence the name, and that it doesn't necessarily have a designated role on the team other than to assist with kills and to give ammo to teammates. So he's neither a big Zed killer nor an amazing trash killer for Hell on Earth but he can fulfill both rows pretty well given that you use the right loadout and you know how to effectively use the weapons properly. Some of the things I'll be going over are the skills, all of his weapons, so I'll be ranking them and going over the starting weapons, the end game loadouts, the meta weapons and which guns to avoid. And then I'll go over some gameplay at the end on how to actually use those meta weapons and how to take down every type of Zed. For waves one through six, you wanna be taking tactical reload, salvo, tight choke, resupply, Supply pack and barrage. After wave 6 I would recommend getting off of resupply pack and going to concussion rounds. This will help you take down flash bounds and scrakes a lot easier. It can make it so you can stumble them and it will give you that extra time to get another shot into them. It will give you like that buffer time where they kind of stumble back for a few seconds. During trader time you want to make sure you're going to resupply pack, refill up your guns at the trader, then drop your guns on the ground and swap back to concussion rounds. We pick up your guns and you should still have that 20% ammo bonus and you will have that stumble effect as well. So realistically your team doesn't really need that extra 30% ammo and 20% armor after wave like six or seven because by then they should have their main loadouts. I guess it depends upon your team but concussion rounds I just feel like is a safer option to choose. Just to quickly go over why it shows all these skills here. So tactical reload this allow you to reload your weapons a lot faster. This is kind of personal preference and it also kind of depends upon the loadout that you chose. I just feel like tactical reload is a lot more useful. This high capacity magazine is good for certain certain loadouts like if you use the A12 with the S12 shotgun loadout, then this can make it so you're a lot more spammy and can be very good for trash, trash sheds. But I just feel like tactical reload is all around going to be a lot more useful, especially for wave one tactical reload with the SG is going to be very, very helpful. Salvo, this will give you 30% more damage, which allows you to one shot most trash sheds and it's going to help you take down flesh pounds and scrakes a lot easier. Fortitude, 50% more health is very, very helpful actually, but if, if you're experienced enough with the game then the, the, the damage is going to be a lot more useful to you. If you're like a newcomer to the game and it's like your first time playing then it, Fortitude is probably the, the skill you want to be taking. Once you eventually learn the Z movements and you know how to keep some kind of distance between you then the, the extra damage is going to be a lot more a lot more useful. Tight choke this is going to make it so you can consistently get headshots a lot easier. It's going to decrease the, the spread of your of your guns. This penetration skill is way too situational and most of the time the Zeds aren't going, aren't going to be properly lined up how you want them to. So you still want to try and line up Zeds but this is just not that helpful in general. It's not really worth using. Both, both of these uh, penetration skills here are not really worth taking. So then after wave six you want to be taking concussion rounds. Make sure you're swapping between these two here during trader time. So you can still get that 20% ammo bonus. The stumble effect is going to make it so when you alt fire with your doomstick, you can actually stumble the flesh pounds, a rage flesh pound or a scrake, and it can allow you to reload during that time and take them down without ever even getting hit. And then barrage, this is going to make it so you just spam your guns during Z time, but you just pretty much just spam your guns. The, the penetration skill is just not really helpful. Shooting in real time is very, very nice. So yeah, just take all these skills here and you should be good to go. For the starter weapons, you will be spawning in with this SG500. This is not very good. Pretty much after wave one, you're going to want to instantly sell this. Honestly, this is probably one of my least favorite starter weapons for any perk. It's just the ammo you start off with is pretty bad and you, you're definitely going to be struggling the first wave with support. Really the only way to conserve ammo is just to make sure you, you're trying to like penetrate through a bunch of zeds at once. Shoot once you can take care of like two or three clots at once just make sure you line them up but that's really the only way to conserve ammo otherwise you're pretty much always going to run out of ammo during wave one for six player hell on earth. So yeah, just to sell the SG500 after wave one, just to kind of go over some of the starter weapons. So you could go for the HRG Buckshot, which isn't very useful. I would not recommend it. It's just okay. If you're really tight with cash, you could go for the Dragon's Breath. This can be pretty decent. The only issue with the Dragon's Breath is it has the stumble effect, which can be kind of annoying. The fire effect can be annoying for other, other people in the game. So Dragon's Breath is a solid option, but you're, probably better off just saving and going right for the 
HZ12. So after the SG500, I would recommend going straight for the HZ12. This is one of the best starter weapons you can, you can buy. It's pretty much an AA-12, but cheaper. Of course, it's not gonna be as fast as the, as good as the AA-12, but it's kind of like a budget AA-12 in the sense that you can kind of spam with it. It's very, very good for trash. It has a pretty good amount of damage, so you can take care of scrakes with it too. You're not really gonna be able to take care of flash pounds with it, but the occasional scrake you should be able to take care of with it as long as you're going for the headshots. So you got your HC-12, then eventually you're gonna wanna get rid of this thing and go, I end up going right for the S12. This is what I end up going for next. This is a DLC gun, so it's kind of overpowered. There's there's not really much of a reason to take any other weapon after the HC-12, you kind of want to go right for the S12. I mean, there's, there's other options that you can choose, but the S12 is just always going to be objectively the best weapon you can choose. So for the meta loadout, I would recommend going for the S12 shotgun and the doomstick. Eventually, once you get both of these, you're going to want to upgrade the doomstick ones and the S12 ones, and then you will have your max carry weight of 20. So this is objectively the best loadout you can choose. The doomstick this is going to be used for for flesh pounds and scrakes. You're gonna be able to one-shot scrakes in the head if you alt fire, shoot all four rounds at once into a scrake head, can decapitate them. For flesh pounds, it takes, I think, two doomsticks shots to the head. So you gotta get all eight shots into a flesh pounds head to decapitate them. So doomstick, just use this for big zeds and your S12 is going to be your main trash killer. This is gonna be what you use probably 80% of the time. And just whenever like, Big Zeds show up, just make sure you swap swap out to your Doomstick and use this thing. So really, I just use the S12 and the Doomstick 99% of the time. That, that's like the main loadout that I use most of the time when I play support. I'm going to go over every single weapon just because, so I can kind of give my opinion on it. And there, there are other options with support. Of course, they're never going to be as good as the S12 and the Doomstick combo, but I'll go over them anyways just because there's some fun loadouts. For all of the weapons here, I already went over the SG500. You want to get rid of this right after Wave 1. The HRG Buckshot, you don't really ever need this. I guess if you don't upgrade the Doomstick and the S12, you could take the, the HRG Buckshot as like a spare secondary, especially if you find that you're running out of ammo. But as long as you're, you're swapping to the 20% ammo skill and then swapping back to concussion rounds, you should pretty much always have ammo on hand with that loadout. So yeah, you don't really need this, but it can work with some loadouts. It can be like a nice spare weapon to choose. The Boomstick, this is an okay weapon. It's decent, but it's kind of like the a worse version of the Doomstick. It's still very, very good. With support, none of his weapons are necessarily bad because they all kind of one-shot things, but the, the Boomstick I would recommend just skipping over unless you just really like how fun it is to use. So the HC-12, I already went over this. This is one of the best starter weapons for support. You can pretty much keep this weapon until like wave six or seven. It can kind of get the job done. The HRG Ballistic Bouncer, this is kind of a meme gun you don't need this it's a, it's a bouncy ball gun it shoots bouncy balls i know that's kind of sounds stupid and it, it is stupid so yeah I, I don't use this gun i find it more annoying than it is helpful yeah just don't don't use this weapon the m4 combat shotgun this is a solid choice it's not amazing but it's pretty good it's definitely a solid weapon you can choose and there, there's loadouts you can choose with the m4 the frost thing this is a solid choice you can freeze that it's, it's especially useful for scrakes i would recommend using it for some loadouts the a12 auto shotgun this is a solid weapon you can't really go wrong with this this used to be one of the best weapons for support of course now the s12 is better you can go for it it's, it's a pretty good weapon. The Doomstick, this is going to be the best Big Z killer for support. Doomstick can kind of go well with almost every loadout. Pretty much the loadouts are going to be you're going to want something to spam with for trash and then you're going to want something to take care of Big Zeds. Assuming you're playing Hell on Earth, otherwise you could just spam with like a an AA-12 and still take down scrakes or flesh pounds. The S-12 shotgun, this is the DLC weapon for support. It is objectively the best support weapon. It's very spammy, it has a very good amount of damage, and it's alt fire can do this like EMP shockwave around you, which can stun Zeds. And especially for like emergency scenarios when you wanna just like take down everything around you. If you're, if you're like stuck in a corner, then you can kind of just spam use this. 
the HRG Blast Brawlers, I've never really used this, so I can't really comment too much on it. I just know that it's it's not a very good weapon. Just from what I've used it, it's kind of an awkward weapon. I, I wouldn't recommend using it. The Dragon's Breath, it's fun to use, but I still think the HZ12 is gonna be a better, it's gonna be better for trash than the Dragon's Breath, but this is a, still a very fun and decent weapon to choose. The Vlad 1000 Nail Gun, this is for a Berserker, so you don't really want this on support. Honestly, I think I've used this maybe once or twice on support so I can't really comment too much on it. It's just kind of not that good for support. There's just a lot of better options to choose in this. HM Tech 301, you should really only ever take this if you don't have a medic on your team. If you don't have a medic then you can choose this. This can be good for side heals. You can use this on teammates but for solo play or if you already have a medic pistol then you don't really need the HM Tech 301. The FAMAS, you do not need this. This is a commando weapon so yeah never take this on support. The blunderbuss again. This is this is a demo weapon. It's all fire is like this shotgun thing, but its main thing is an explosive attack. And yeah, you're you're not meant to do that as support. So I don't even really know why this is on support to begin with. Dual nine millimeter pistols. You don't want these. No class really ever needs dual nine millimeter pistols unless you're spawning in with them. So yeah, don't don't buy these. Then the dashing gun. Stupid. <laughs> it's dumb. It's yeah, don't take this. I'm just gonna show you um, how to actually take down the Baker Zeds here with this Doomstick. Quarter pounders here. Make sure you have your Doomstick. Aim for the head, that was not a good example. Aim for the head, you can one-shot them. Stumble effect is pretty nice. For Scrakes, you, you can kill them before they're ever even rage. So, go up to him. There you go, one shot and he's dead. Let me do that again. Go up to him. One shot to the head and he's gone. One shot to the head and he's gone. It's very, very satisfying, this Doomstick. So two shots per, per Flesh Pound with this Doomstick. Upgraded once. That was not good, but... So if you miss your shots, it's gonna end up taking three of them, but... So yeah, that's how you take care of the Big Zeds. Just make sure you're using this Doomstick here. I don't really need to show you how to take care of the, the regular Zeds. Just use your S12 here. Just kind of spam with this. Aim for the head. For the riders, you want to aim for the legs. For the husks, you want to aim for the head or the fuel tank. Edars, you want to aim for the center glowy piece. And for bosses, bosses are just okay for support. Of course, you know, a gunslinger, a sharpshooter, or even a demolitionist is going to be better for bosses, but support can work. This, this doomstick upgrade at once is pretty decent against some of the bosses. For solo play, you're going to be just fine. For six player Hell and Earth, you may want to swap perks. If I do end up doing more of these, I will probably end up redoing my gunslinger and my commando video because you know both of those videos are kind of lower quality and that was kind of before I knew how I wanted to make these type of videos and my gunslinger video is like 30 minutes long which is kind of insane yeah, they, yeah that could be cut down to like 15 20 minutes at the most there, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to gunslinger because that is my main main perk and that that's the perk that I have the most experience in so I have a lot of opinions on it yeah, that's everything you need to know hopefully you enjoyed this and yeah I will see you next time